That's that's what, love now, that's that, love that was a tagline from a TV show I used to work on. Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. What TV show is that? Isn't that Kerbal Hawk? Very good. <laughs> I used to work on that show quite a bit with Louie. I was always doing stunts. Yeah, that's how you started. Yeah. All right. You still do a lot of stunt work now? Uh, yeah. Still coordinate a lot, but. And I do a lot for Adam Green. <clears throat> yeah. And I still love the stunt business, but, um, you know, I'm 62 now, so I don't no, need to be falling. <laughs> From 15 feet to the concrete and stuff like that. So, so when you stunt coordinate, are you, you coordinating people under you and telling them how to do yeah. it safely rather than yeah. taking the hate exactly. yourself? And hiring the people to do the things and working with the director about with all the action. So it's, yeah. I, I always loved coordinating. Mm -hmm. And I don't, you know, I still love doing stunts, but it's just, you know, i got to be sensible. Oh, I, so you okay if you, have you read my book? Yeah, of course I have. And I listen to the audio. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. So you already know that I believe I have undiagnosed concussions. Yes. That, uh, I have you. Let's advertise it. Oh, you do? <laughs> I do. Uh, paperback or? Oh, the hardback. Wow. Oh, yes. Very good. Yeah, but. My uh, both my sons are college students right now. Are they already? Because reading the book, you know, you don't oh, have yeah. anything to reference when, it from. When you see the pictures of my sons, back, really like in the first Hatchet movie, they were in the first yeah. Hatchet movie, and they're like uh, so much younger. They were probably like six and seven? Well, they're three years apart, so whatever they were. And what, what year was Hatchet? Do you Hatchet? Remember? I don't remember. I'm sorry. Bad fam. I should, but I don't. Oh, <laughs> they wait. all blur together. <laughs> I think it was uh, 2007, I think. Because we're at the 10 year anniversary. So, uh, oh, but damn, already. now my, my oldest is uh, in grad school at Texas A&M, wow. getting his master's, and the younger one is uh, second year at Vanderbilt. Wow, congrats. You must be a proud papa. Yeah, very, <laughs> they're doing great. And they were also on the set of Hatchet, and they did some voiceover with you as well? My oldest did, yeah. He's uh, still. He uh, is part of um, Victor's voice. Oh, yeah? When he yells, Daddy. Mm -hmm. That's a mix of my voice and my oldest son, Jace's voice. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. pretty cool, yeah. <laughs> so I have to ask, because the fans are clamoring to know, do you and Adam have plans for another movie together, whether it's Hatchet 4 or another collaboration in the future? Oh, we'll do something in the future, sure. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> uh, we both enjoy working together too much to not do something. <laughs> He's a he's a genius within the horror world. So. And he's our is just a horror fan. And like look how far he's come, and now fans are coming to see him. Right, they're asking him to sign stuff, yeah. just like me. I mean, I was a yeah. horror fan too. Yep. I and I was a stuntman, so I never anticipated signing him. You never expected being a legend. I remember the story in the book where you went to your first convention as Jason, and you were just an audience, and it was a beekler. Yeah. That said, oh, and we have Jason here in the audience oh, exactly. today. And yeah. He stood up, did a little wave, sat back down, and you went out to get something at the bar, I think. And yeah. there was a big crowd behind you. Exactly. <laughs> like, and you that's <laughs> absolutely true. That whole story is true. I just, I left the auditorium while Beepler was doing the, the panel and went out to get a hot dog or something. And the <laughs> there was, you know, a bunch of people Why are you stopping me? me? Oh. <laughs> that's different. So, yeah, I mean. You know, the horror community is very uh, loyal. Mm -hmm. They'll give anything you do a chance. Yeah. Maybe it won't be well received all the time, depending on the project, but they always give you a chance. So mm -hmm. I love the horror fans. And what can we expect from you in the next couple of years? I know Death House has been <coughs> on the minds of all the horror fans. Right. It's been sort of miscommunicated as an expendable of a horror villain, but it's really not that at all. I don't think so. I mean, because uh, a lot of the horror personalities that are in the movie are cameos. Mm -hmm. So I don't want people to say it's an expendable support because it's a little misleading. Exactly. Think. But uh, I've seen the movie and uh, I'm very impressed. And mm -hmm. what, what is so amazing to me about the film is that the performances, the 
acting performances. Mm -hmm. There's not a weak performance in the movie. <laughs> That's rare. Yeah. On a lower budget horror film, mm -hmm. a lot of times you'll get people that are not that experienced and, right. and you know don't pull off their character, but I think uh it's a home run every time. Really? It it I sounds like crazy, it. but I think Barbara Crampton's amazing in it and uh, Sean Whalen is very cool and you know there's also actors D. Wallace and Sid Haven if I'm correct yep they're What's both great like? uh, obviously because they're so good anyway they're, when you get together with all these horror genre veterans on the same set is it almost like a family reunion because you've worked with them so many times in the past oh uh, yeah it, it is because we spend so much time together at conventions like this mm -hmm. that we get to know each other, then we work together on a film. Right. Uh, we already know each other's um, personalities, so I think that helps when you're when you're doing a scene. Like I did a movie called uh, Cut with uh, Tony Todd, and he and I are neighbor prison inmates, and the director, Joe Hollow, was let me write a, a monologue. Mm -hmm that I would deliver while sitting in my cell talking to Tony in the next cell. And it was great to be able to write something like that that was meaningful to me and kind of based on my life, but, you know, a fictional version. But And it was it was just very cool to be able to, to deliver something that I had written. And Tony's listening to me and, you know, he's, a, he's one of my best friends in the business, so... Uh, it's, always, it's always good to work with your friends. <laughs> Very cool. My ginger ale, straight. Nothing else in it. <laughs> no Jack Daniels in this at all. <laughs> How about Iron Lung? What can you tell us about that? Uh, we have yet to do it, <laughs> but uh, it's an interesting story, and I, I look forward to doing it. It's, uh, you know... Uh, Kind of a non-speaking character with, <laughs> you have no wears experience with that. something on his face. Oh, no experience. Yeah, that is a stretch for you. I know, <laughs> um, but it's it's interesting because we just did a makeup test at my mm -hmm. house. Oh. And uh, we put the whole makeup on and everything, and it looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, I was hopeful about the look of it, but the people they got involved to do the makeup yeah. are very good and. Uh, the whole look of my character is pretty scary. Nice. So we're I'll hoping to do that. Uh, I think we're going to do that maybe in July. That's exciting. Yeah. I don't remember if you mentioned it in your book, but have you ever had an allergy to my makeup? Um, You've been in so many prosthetics and so many face pieces and whole body suits. I don't think so, but there was, I had an issue in, while well, shooting Hatchet 2, mm -hmm. where the body made my entire back I remember that now, yeah. Blister. Yep. And I've never had anything like that. And people yeah. were saying, well, you must have developed a, an allergy to the latex. And I'm like, nah, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, what we have determined that there was something left kind of in, within the makeup oh. that irritated my skin. Okay. Um, and it was really bad. My, my buddy Rick, who... Uh, Rick McCollum is a stuntman I've worked with since... 1983, I think. He's like your, if you were to defer somebody to a stuntman or a coordinator other than you, it's your go to die. Exactly. He's, and he'll, he'll, he'll be coordinating, coordinating more and more of the films I do because I want to step away from the, the stunts and yeah. focus on the characters because I'm getting a lot of more complicated roles, so mm -hmm. I, I don't want to have to worry about something else. Complicated. But, uh, um, but he almost had to step in as Victor because my back had broken out. Wow, so that yeah. bad. And he's the only other person to be adult Victor mm -hmm. in a couple of the Hatchet movies. Yeah, he, Adam's wife at the time was young Victor. Right. But I didn't know that he stepped in for you as adult Victor. Yeah, well, because yeah. like if you think about the first Hatchet movie, I play the father okay. too yeah. as myself, and I come home and the house is on fire. Mm -hmm. And I chop in the door, and Victor's inside. Oh, that's him. So that's that clever camera yeah. editing. Right. Okay. Yeah, so he 
he has been the only person to be in the adult Victor makeup mm -hmm. besides me. Oh, wow. Learn yeah. something new every day. <laughs> yeah. So you said that you're having more complicated roles bestowed upon you, and are those out of the makeup? Yeah, which is great. I've, I've even done some comedy really? in recent years, and I'm telling you, I almost love comedy more than anything. Oh, it does not work. Because, uh, <laughs> as you guys know, I'm a funny motherfucker. <laughs> He's a huge prankster. In fact, when I couldn't find you right away, too, I'm like, oh my God, I'm being punked. He's playing a prank on me. <laughs> right. But uh, I did a movie called Smothered yep. <laughs> with John Schneider, who, as you know, I used to work with as a stunt person on The Dukes of Hazzard. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so it was kind of cool to work with him as a writer director. Some uh, years and later, I yeah. Played myself in the movie, so mm -hmm. it was fun to do a a comedic version of my life as it exists, but kind of a uh, more fun, funny right. uh, <laughs> take on it. So um, it was it was good, and the movie I'm very happy with. It, you know, mm -hmm. had all my friends. Bill Mosley, R.A. Mihailov, uh, Don Shanks, Malcolm Danar. So uh, it's got a good cast, and it's very. Fun. It was. It's just really fun to do comedy. Well, you and Bill play off really well off each other. Just look at that old thirty-seven scene with the chicken scene, right. that one, which is improvised. Yeah, that's that's why I like working with Mosley so yeah. much because <laughs> he thought of that scene on the fly and just to another brilliant actor. He really is, and you know he's he's a Yale graduate, which I, I love. I know that. Yeah. Wow, that's my home territory. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, you know, not many people within the horror industry are. <laughs> Yaleys. <laughs> Yaleys, <right? laughs> but that's mostly. Google dogs. <laughs> but uh, he and I are always testing each other on on <laughs> grammatical things and spelling. And, really. And <laughs> trivia that most people wouldn't know and stuff because I just love that kind of stuff. Very but cool. yeah, it was fun to for him to come up with a mm -hmm. a scene on the fly that within one scene makes you feel sympathy for my character and mm -hmm. hate him even more. Yeah. And toward the end of the film you see why. So Yeah. It, was it wasn't really just a scene for a scene's sake. Right. It had back meaning, which is fantastic. And that, just when you work with actors that are that creative while shooting, mm -hmm. you know, anybody can think of something when they're in their hotel or something, mm -hmm. but when you do it, when right. you say something pops in your mind and it, mm -hmm. it's brilliant. And John Schneider did the same thing. Mm -hmm. Do you know that story? I don't. What's that one? On, on Smothered. Toward the end of the film, I realize who the killer is, mm -hmm. and I pull a gun, and I have the gun trained on the killer, and I have had my mask super glued on my face, you know that part, mm -hmm. so I can't get it off, and I say to the killer, I say, uh, you know, uh, I talk about pouring gas on it to try and loosen the glue, and when we shot the scene, the killer says, uh, when I have the gun on them, I'm trying not to give away too much about yeah. the, who the killer is, but uh, the killer says, go ahead and shoot, you'll just set yourself on fire mm -hmm. because of the fumes of the gas yeah. that I've just poured on my face. And uh, we did one take of that, and then John Schneider says, how about if the killer says this? And I was like, I'm playing myself, so it's brilliant. <laughs> Then the killer says, go ahead and shoot. You'll just set yourself on fire. You should know something about that. Should you be a <laughs> Considering I've been burned. Oh, wow. I was like, That's wow, funny. that is very personal. That's, yeah. That and, comes deep. <laughs> and it just made it so much more meaningful. So. Right. <laughs> creativity inspiring creativity and yeah. staying sharp. Yeah. And so I just... Uh, I enjoy working with, and every time I do a horror film, I'm working mm -hmm. with my friends. Yeah. You know? And you know about the video game, I'm sure. I do. We're going to talk about that next. Yeah. Yep. I've seen footage play online. It looks incredible. I know you've played it. Can you tell us I a have. little bit from your perspective of motion capturing that? Well, first of all, I was honored that the 
makers of the video game thought that I should do the motion capture for Jason. Because, Hello, you know, <laughs> well, I mean, there are, there are what, people, but uh, you are the legend. There are ten different guys that played Jason. According to our fans, there's one legend. Well, <laughs> whatever. I I'm, happen to be the only one that did more than one film, but yeah. there are several other guys. Mm -hmm. But they, in their opinion, thought that I should do the motion capture, so I was happy to do it. We started last year in January, mm -hmm. and we didn't finish the motion capture till mm -hmm. October. Wow, I know it took so long. And it was off and on yeah, throughout that period, but that's how long the the process of mm -hmm. building a video game takes. Mm -hmm. Totally and, different uh, world than what you've known. Oh yeah, I mean, I've said it before, trying to be scary while I'm wearing spandex. <laughs> Isn't uh, it green, bright green spandex? No, no, oh, it's not. Wasn't? Okay. No, it's weird looking, but it is spandex with <laughs> sensors everywhere. Yep. And. Uh, <laughs> it is kind of weird to be killing people when you dress like that. <laughs> but um, as I have said in other interviews, I didn't realize they had the capability of instantaneously animating me. Mm -hmm. So I'm wearing spandex with all the sensors, but I could look at a monitor mm -hmm. and see myself animated as Part 7 Jason mm -hmm. live. So whatever movements wow. I did on the on the motion capture stage, I could see on a monitor as Jason. As Jason, so maybe that's common, but I didn't realize they had that capability. I had no idea. So it was a little easier to be able to look at the monitor and say, mm -hmm. "Okay, that's how I look really." Yeah. <laughs> Even though I look ridiculous now, I don't over there. So, um, but yeah, we did so many kills, and the game is. So amazing! I, I can't wait for it to come out. The gore factor is over the top. It's beyond what any rated R movie could show. It's the <laughs> only time that I've ever done something, whether it's shooting a film or whatever. When I watch what I've done, it makes me go, "Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's that fucking brutal!" And uh, yeah, so it's uh, it is really brutal, and they're they're. Having some issues or something with uh, uh, getting the rating overseas or whatever, so. Um, Is there any sort of timeline we could look at? I, I just know it's soon. Yeah. I know a lot of fans are very much Sooner waiting the that. better, yeah. Especially when they saw that um, you got injured on set. They're like, oh, what kind of kill was he doing then? I was. Can you tell us? I was ripping a guy out of the window of a car. Okay, and you hit your tricep. No, I didn't right. hit it, but I just uh, tore it. Oh. I don't know, just the, the odd angle yanking really? a human being <laughs> out of a car, what, you know, was yeah. a, appearing to be a car. It wasn't really a car, yeah. of course. But uh, somehow I tore my tricep and it got completely bruised. I can show you a picture of it. Nice. Unless you already saw it, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I'll definitely see it. But, I haven't yeah. seen it yet. I just heard... Um, let's see, we talked about the video game. <clears throat> oh, I'd love to talk about To Hell and Back. You first did your book. Right. And then you did the 12 episodes of The Killer and I with author Mike, which was hilarious. If you guys haven't seen it, yeah, it's on Amazon Prime for free right now. If not, it's like $1.99 an episode. It's totally worth it. You are hilarious. It oh is fun. The That's you in your purest form, I would think. Yeah. <laughs> and Sometimes people say... Uh, Jane, you're kind of an asshole in the show, but, <laughs> but I'm, I, I, I agree I can be that, but it's in a fun way, I think. Yeah, so, well, you find it funny. Not in a, uh, <laughs> yeah, I certainly do. <laughs> it's not in a mean-spirited way at all. Right, so, yeah. Was the goal of the whole entire thing just to get him over his fears? Because that's all it seems to be consisting of. I know, kind of. <laughs> Are you supposed to be on a book Because signing? he's afraid of everything, my God. <laughs> Every He's not just kind of thing of we would encounter, he, he was afraid of. <laughs> the two-foot wall, snake. Yeah. Oh, but, poor Mike. Um, he probably had no idea what he was signing We're after. still thinking about making uh, a TV show out of it. But oh, wow. Yeah. He'll sign on for that people. after all the hell you put him through. <laughs> yeah, wow. Well, he's conquered some of his demons because of me, so that's <laughs> good. And did you conquer any of yours? Uh, I don't know if eating little really testicles really I mean, count. You know, like, I don't know if you ever saw Adam Green's sleepover. No, Scary not Scary sleepover. 
I did an ep the, the first episode of his scary sleepover, mm -hmm. and uh, he asked me what scares me, mm -hmm. and you know, it, it's always been a tough question because interviewers always ask that, what scares you? You do a lot of scare, what scares you? And I never could come up with a, mm -hmm. a true answer because right. there's none of the classic stuff or that that scares me. And I know it sounds like I'm just trying to be some tough guy, but there's mm -hmm. nothing that scares me, but I was able to come up with something, and I said, you know, I have an answer for you on the scary sleepover. It's a, it's a light-hearted thing. I said, I do have an answer for you, but it's not fun. It's not going to be traditional. No, and it's not fun and light-hearted, and we can make fun of it, mm -hmm. but if you really want to know what scares me, it's dementia. Oh, interesting. When you can see someone who doesn't recognize people they've lived with for 50 years, yeah. that's fucking terrifying. That is. So if yeah. you really want to know what scares me, that does. Mm -hmm. But, you know, again, it's not a fun thing that you can try and conquer right. and yeah. face no. your fears. And so, it's but, not like, put the snake around your neck, you'll be cured. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So none of the other stuff. Does. I just always found it funny mm -hmm. that people are frightened of things <laughs> like that. Snakes and right. heights and <laughs> water and spiders and all that stuff. It's kind of mm -hmm. <laughs> Was In a way, though, did the sex scene that Adam Green gave you and Hatchet too scare you? Because it was your first. It didn't scare me. Intimidate? No, I don't think it even intimidated, but it was a different kind of challenge that I... <laughs> thought I would never face. Right. I thought I'd always be killing people and oh, yeah. I'd never be given the job of having a sex scene in a movie. Yeah. Who the hell wants to see that? <laughs> so it was a different kind yeah. of challenge, but I, I liked it. Yeah. I liked it just because it was that challenge. Another thing that adds to your repertoire of acting skills? I guess, yeah. <laughs> it was it was different, but cause it, that's the thing with Adam Green. He has given me things to do on film that mm -hmm. I thought I'd never do. Mm -hmm. he, he was the first person to let me cry, yep. do emotion. Uh, he had me dance <laughs> as Meshuggah, uh -uh. sex scene, uh, you know, so lots of different things that be the way I look, you wouldn't normally see me right. perform that kind of scene in a film. So. Mm -hmm. Another way we don't usually see you is out of a mask until recently. I know a lot of our fans love Hatchet and love you as Jason, but I personally loved you as BTK and um, as Ian because I'm a true crime buff. You know, I studied criminal justice, absolutely love it. Right. And to see you portray these real life killers and you feel that fear that these people are really incited in their victims, that was amazing. I think that yeah. was some of your finest work. Well, I appreciate that because uh, when Mike Pfeiffer, who directed both of those films, mm -hmm. the first one being Ed Gein, he said, hey, I'm doing a movie about Ed Gein, and like you, I already knew all the stories of all these famous serial killers, because right. like, it's fascinating. Yeah. I don't look like this guy, are you right. sure? <laughs> I, no, I, what I said was, he said, I'm doing a movie about Ed Gein, I want you to be in it. I said, okay, what am I going to do? <laughs> He said, I want you to play Ed. And I was like, Ed? He was like 5'8", yeah. 140. Scrawny. Yeah. And he says, I know, but we don't necessarily have to focus on your size. And, and uh, I was impressed that he wanted me to do that. And then based on that film, he asked me to play Dennis Rader in BTK. Which is brilliant. If our fans haven't seen it, check it out. I love that, that movie because for an actor... To, ha to play a character who goes from one extreme to the other, very likable yeah. and charming sometimes, mm -hmm. like in the church scenes yeah. and the Boy Scout leader, and then murderously, psychotically violent. Yeah. On the other hand, all within the same film. That's that's what a, an actor loves. You portrayed both beautifully. Like that is something you haven't been able to show the depth of before. Right. That movie. I was I was setting up for uh, 
think it was Scarefest in Lexington one year, a few years, a number of years ago, and one of the crew guys that worked in the convention center said, oh, I know you. I, I, I recognize you from a movie. So, of course, hey. Hi. Hello. Um, I, uh, I assume he was going to say from Friday the 13th or something. He says, yeah, you, you played that guy in a movie called BTK. I said, you don't have any idea that I played Jason, but you know me from BTK. I, I loved it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have any plans for any more True Life inspired movies? I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind. You know, I, I, you probably know I was in the Bundy movie also. Mm -hmm. But I played the warden of the prison, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, that was again Mike. Oh, yes, was that also him? Yeah. yeah, I wasn't sure about the director on that one. But uh, I've I've always traveled to and visited locations mm -hmm. of famous serial killers. That's that maybe I've kind of a, I mean, a weird hobby, out. but you're Florida now. You said Bundy's stomping grounds. <laughs> right. No, it's not of your house. I'm going to do that. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, way back before I did BTK or Ed Gein, yeah. I worked right here in Orlando on a movie that was about a real serial killer. Which one was that? You know what? Um, no, nah, you wouldn't know, but... No. <laughs> <laughs> the cameraman just has slams. In fact, <laughs> it was a female serial killer. Was it, um, Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I did a movie called Monster, right here in Orlando. Yep. We shot for four weeks, mm -hmm. and I was a stunt coordinator, and I played the cop mm -hmm. that arrested her at the That's end right, of the film. Did. And, uh, you know, she wins an Oscar for it, so. <laughs> she transformed herself. Beautifully. Yeah. That showed dedication. Like you thought Charlize Theron was such a starlet, but she is the top of her craft. Yeah, she she was dedicated. amazing to work with. And yeah. you know, of all the people on the set of a film, I had I had the most time to sit and watch her. Mm -hmm. Because everybody else, all department heads and crew and stuff, they're constantly doing stuff. Mm -hmm. I was there for the stunts. Great. So if there was no action at the time, I could sit and watch her mm -hmm. off camera, mm -hmm. preparing for scenes. And nobody else had that luxury because they all had other jobs that they had to mm -hmm. get distracted and concentrate on. Great. So I could watch how she mm -hmm. prepared mm -hmm. for certain scenes. And she was she's a genius, obviously. Mm -hmm. And uh, I felt very privileged mm -hmm. to be in that inner circle that could be with her and perform and prepare and stuff. So I think I learned a lot from watching her on that film. From what I understand though, much like your own process, she isolated herself from the cast and crew and got into that headspace. A little bit, but not, not annoyingly so. Yeah, no, not like you've heard of other characters, whether it's true or not, Heath Ledger is Joker, totally isolated himself. Right. Like, but she definitely became in tune enough with the character, so it totally transformed her. And then people were always saying, boy, they did so much makeup on her. I said, they didn't really. <laughs> no, she gained the weight. Which she gained the weight. She, don't really she did do. wear dentures because yeah. Eileen had crooked teeth. Yeah. So she wore dentures. Mm -hmm. And all they did in the way of makeup was give her more freckles. That's it? Yeah. Wow. There was nothing else, no prosthetics, nothing. Mm -hmm. She just... The way she would carry herself yeah. in between scenes, just staying in character, was mm -hmm. just amazing to watch. Oh, so maybe talk about Tell Him Back. Oh, right. So, <laughs> the documentary version of the book, really. Um, what inspired you to make it into a documentary? What? What inspired you to make it into a documentary? Uh, it wasn't necessarily me. It was a guy named Derek Dennis Herbert who mm -hmm. really enjoyed the book. Mm -hmm and thought that there should be a visual version of it that was more involved. And, it's already uh, pretty involved. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I I really got a good feeling from him, and yeah. I'm very happy with the, the final project. It'll be out anytime soon. It's just, uh, 
being submitted to festivals and stuff right now. Oh, that's fantastic. Unfortunately, I think there's always going to be that pre um, prejudging mm -hmm. when people that are not horror people hear, oh, there's a documentary about the guy that played Jason. Ah, <laughs> I don't like horror movies. Right. That's not what this is at all. It isn't, but I know that's going to happen because it's already happened in the past. Mm -hmm. I had a meeting years ago with, uh, I probably shouldn't say the name of it, but it's a, a uh, charity that focuses on people that have been burned, mm -hmm. and obviously I have, mm -hmm. and they were looking for a quote-unquote celebrity spokesperson for <laughs> that charity. So I met with all of the people mm -hmm. about possibly being that person because, you know... You're very passionate about it. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a devastating injury that you go through a lot more than people realize. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I met with them, and I could tell, in the meeting, I could tell that one of the women didn't like me because I play a horror character and didn't think that... I would be the proper spokesperson because I kill people in films. <laughs> and so I did not get the wow. the selection. Mm -hmm. They went with a uh, war veteran mm -hmm. who had been burned mm -hmm. because they thought that was a better image than a guy that plays a horror character. And that person uh, turned out to be a drug addict, piece of shit. <laughs> And made them look bad. So there you go. Okay. You you judge something yeah. at face value instead of what the person does. Mm -hmm. And you know, so That's I've been I've though. been picketed by religious groups really? at appearances because wow. of the character I play. <laughs> that was just tickle your funny bone, though. How do you not go there and provoke them? <laughs> Oh, I do. I confronted, <laughs> oh, I I confronted some of them saying, what do you do for humanity? This? Yeah. Harass other people that are trying to do right. something? Because, because of the character I play, mm -hmm. I can go visit people that are currently in a burn unit, mm -hmm. suffering because they happen to be a horror fan. I brighten their day. Oh, yeah. I've been to AIDS hospices where people are dying, but they're horror fans, and I make them happy for the day. Mm -hmm. What do you do besides harass people? And be holier than that. Right. So. They have an answer for that, I'm sure. Yeah. No, nothing. Just at Monster Palooza a couple weeks ago, you donated a prosthetic made by Beeler, who has a replica of your part. I mean, at the time, the name was Part 8 Mask. So. Seven. <laughs> I wore it for the photo op, and then we auctioned it to benefit the burn unit I was in. The so. second burn unit you were in. The yes, the, the, well, the I was never in a burn unit right. in the first one, if yeah. you remember, so. They claimed to be a burn unit, but. No, no, they never claimed that, oh. but they just thought it didn't need to be a burn right. unit. Right. <laughs> so that hospital is not good. That's where yeah. I received terrible care. Yep. My nephew was in there for a serious head injury, didn't do well. My mother died there, and my father died there. So that's not a hospital I no. like. Yeah. But you still donate and spend time and charity towards the San Francisco, I refresh my memory on the name of that hospital. Bothan Burn Unit Bothan in St. Francis, oh, Francis Hospital. Francis, Francisco. My bad. Yeah, that's where they saved my life, so. Yeah. And you said if you were treated there, you would have been able to get out in a fraction of the time that you spent. In oh, for sure. Because yeah. my, my roommate, when I was in the burn unit, was burned 85% of his body. I was burned 50. And he was in the hospital total of less time than I was by far. He was in the hospital three months. Right. With 85% with burns, I was in five and a half months with 50. So that just shows you when you have proper care how much better it is. Mm -hmm. Did doing the documentary versus doing the book bring back anything you thought you were over emotionally? Because uh, you can hear it in your voice when you do the audio book. You can hear your emotions when you go through all the chapters. And right. Ups there, and downs. In the documentary, I told the story that was omitted from the book. Mm -hmm. the, the fight 
type story. Don't let your lawyer advise you not to tell? Right. Oh, you actually tell it. So I tell it in the documentary, and then when I watch the documentary, I once again told them to take it out. So, <laughs> so you won't see it. And Maybe you when the cameras are off, I'll be able to get that story but and keep it personal. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> that's, it's not one I'm proud of, so that's why I don't oh, okay. necessarily talk about it. Well, if it's okay with you, I'd like to just end with some questions from fans. Okay. Let's see. Well, I bring these up. Why don't you tell me about how you spent your last spooky empire at Monsters and Gods and Monsters? Well, as you know, I arrived in October yep. for Spooky Empire. Which was on Wednesday. Until- and then the <laughs> hurricane arrived hurricane. shortly after. We were fortunate not to be devastated in this area, but they canceled it regardless. Right. I, PD first told me that they were canceling Friday. Yes. And But yes, Saturday was going to be great. Yes. Friday was the bad day, and I said, okay, good. Oh, that's good, I'm fine. here. Yeah. Yep, I'm already here. And then they had to cancel the whole thing because nobody could get here. So even though Saturday was a beautiful day, mm-hmm. I understand that you know most of the actors couldn't get here oh, in yeah. time. Yeah, the you couldn't cancels. fly on Friday. No. Nope. And you fly from LA to here on Saturday, you don't get here till the end of yeah. the day. So I understood why, but did you see my video that I shot during yeah. the hurricane? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> And then uh, he rescheduled, so I was happy to come back. Yeah, but I think it was like two months later to kind of sort of a Christmas theme. <laughs> right, but it was nice of Gods and Monsters to mm-hmm. invite me over to do a signing yeah. on the Sunday, I think it was, right? On yes. the weekend? Yeah, and they started and, sort of like their refugees, a spooky empire, who are here and have nowhere to go. Right, and <laughs> I was amazed at the turnout there. Yeah. It's a cool store anyway. I'm I've sure already they moved oh. that store, but they still have it. It's just oh. relocated. Well, it's a great business. They're great that, people yeah. that run it. They have the heart. Right. So it, it was fun to be able to do something yeah. while I was here and then came back and did the show in December. Mm-hmm. Um, but. All righty. This first question is from Bill Smith. He wants to know if you have always signed your own fan mail and autographs. Like well, when it's sent into your like, snail mail uh-huh. and you get it at your post office box. Is it really you responding to them? Do some people not do that? <laughs> some people, believe it or not, hire have, people. To sign their name? Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> so there I, you go, Bill. It is really No, pain. absolutely. Which is why a lot of people complain how long it takes. Because <laughs> it's real and authentic. Because I do sign you everything. You get bombarded, I'm sure. I do. And I'm not going to not sign it mm-hmm. but sometimes I'm traveling for so long it oh, takes yeah. it'll take a long turnaround before you get back but it is absolutely signed by me I would never have <laughs> somebody sign my name that's that's <laughs> inexcusable all right this one's from Denise Williams she's wondering if you sit pig and twisted will ever do a continuation to the video of sick man well, I mean, we kind of did with A Place in the Woods, mm-hmm. a second one, but um, I, you know, people know I'm a big fan of Twisted. Mm-hmm. And uh, where's the Jason tattoo? Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Just checking. <laughs> I want to make sure you still had it. <laughs> I don't want to have to kill somebody. Um, but yeah, I'm a big fan of Twisted and, and, uh, I will always do whatever I can Mm -hmm. with and for them, and uh, um, I enjoy their music. I know it seems like I'm fabricating that notion, but I've always loved their music. Very cool. And ICP? Yep. You're a huge ICP fan? Yep. Mostly twisted now, okay. uh, but still, I'll always like ICP as well. Do you attend Rock and Shock the year that they headlined? Oh, yeah. A couple times they've been there. Yeah. Yeah. So I always go mm-hmm. to the, the show because Jean name. has it in her club, right? Mm-hmm. You know, very close to the convention. So are you able to blend in? No. <laughs> no, you can't watch from the. I, I go up in the uh, balcony. Yeah. Where the the VIP section is, and just watch the show. You don't go full juggler with the makeup. 
Uh, I have. Oh, yeah. I have. I've put the makeup on to do one show, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> let's see. Lori Torina wants to know, let's see, out of all the non-makeup roles, what's your favorite? Hmm. Interesting. Uh, as we spoke about, I, I really enjoyed doing BTK. Mm -hmm. um, but Adam Green gave me a chance to do some emotion as Victor's father, so yeah. that'll always be close to my heart. You know? mm -hmm. And lastly, Jonathan Marin wants to know if you are in charge of the Friday 13th franchise. Which would I come back with the no. mask on? <laughs> yes, Jonathan, I would. <laughs> I never wanted to take the fucking thing off. Sorry about the language. Is that bad? That's fine. No. Okay. Fuck I never fuck. wanted to take the fucking mask off. I was replaced against my will. So, yes, I would come back. <laughs> what is that? What no. direction would you want to put? take it in? I mean... Would uh, you want to bring it back to old school slasher roots? Or would you want kind to of, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I think on. in recent films... In my opinion, just my opinion, they made Jason a little too human, mm -hmm. um, where he's building traps and, mm -hmm. you know, making tunnels and right. stuff like that. I didn't see that film, but that's not the kind of Jason that I mm -hmm. always picture. I don't, I don't, I, yeah, I, I don't think he would ever go to those lengths to... Mm -hmm get his victims, so I would, you know, go back a little bit to where, you know, more of a... Using improvised weapons. Right, <laughs> whatever happens to be there. Yeah. And, you know, if there's no weapon, then you kill someone with something else, like a sleeping bag, that's, <laughs> that's a classic kill, to cl yeah. kill someone with a sleeping bag. Do you know that kill? You do? Mm -hmm. No, you don't. No, he doesn't. Well, the story. Oh. And the book. He knows how oh, that okay. cut, because I explained to him, I actually made him watch the movie, I'm like, they cut the scene! <laughs> right, but, you know, when you kill something with something that's not a weapon, that's yeah. creative. <laughs> yep. I like that kind of stuff. <laughs> I don't think Jason goes into too much preparation for the killing, just right. more spur of the moment, that's what I always like, mm -hmm. so. But he should just have so much damn emotion in his eyes, Trini. <laughs> I know. <laughs> they, up his eyes. They, they changed, they <laughs> recast got rid of me because they wanted to have someone with more expressive eyes. And Jason has one. Jason has one fucking <laughs> eye. And the one thing that people always said was my eyes are expressive, so that's kind yeah. of a lame <laughs> excuse. But. Alright, well that's the last question. I hope you have a great spooky empire. I will. I always like it here, especially at this property. It's always fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the fans are always great in Orlando, so I look forward to choking you motherfuckers. <laughs>